On today's video, I am bringing you more things that have been interesting, surprising, and some unexpected when it comes to living in Canada. My name is Busi, and I am a South African living in Canada. And today I'm going to be giving you six things that have been surprising, interesting, and some unexpected with living in Canada. And number one is that the salary in Canada when you get paid it's very normal to get paid bi-weekly which means in a month you are very likely going to get two salaries instead of one number three is self-checkout when you're going to buy your groceries it is so normal to find that there are self-checkout lanes which means you don't have to interact with a cashier or anybody else that's going to be ringing up your your stuff the things that you bought but you're gonna do it to yourself and i have experienced it living in amsterdam that was the first time i think i experienced self-checkout but i it wasn't at the scale that it is here but i also think that it keeps advancing and they keep adding it to more and more places and i know a lot of people who share that it's things that take away people's jobs you can look at it in different ways really maybe people can upskill now to be able to create and maintain those machines yes of course it's gonna need less people to do that but there's an opportunity there to potentially learn a new skill as everything goes towards digitization i honestly think we're going to start seeing more and more of things like this being introduced in a number of different parts of the world Number four is the fact that if you would change provinces, so right now I live in the province of Ontario, if for some reason I'd say I want to go live in British Columbia now and I've been there for over three months, if I'm going to be living there for over three months, I would have to change my driver's license. My driver's license right now is for the province of Ontario. If I'd move to another province, I would go have to swap my driver's license for the local license in that area. If you're South African, I would think it works similar in a lot of other countries around the world. But if you have a driver's license in South Africa, it's a South African driver's license, which means you could be in Gauteng, you could be in the Western Cape, you could be wherever, really, the Northern Cape. You still use the same driver's license regardless of how long you're going to be in that province. But over here, if you would be in another province longer than three months, you would be required to go and swap your your driver's license for the driver's license of that province and one of the reasons that make the most sense for me and why they would require that the driver's license here has your address so wherever you're staying your driver's license will have your your address and you have to keep it current so if you have moved to another province it makes sense i guess that you get a driver's license that reflects the province that you're in i just don't know why each province has to have their own when you're all in the same country. So that has been something that's been quite interesting and surprising to learn about Canada. Number five, much similar to what I just mentioned with the driver's license. If you are a professionally registered engineer in the province of Ontario and you move to another province, you would have to get registered as a professional engineer in that other province. So. If you're an engineer in South Africa, you know that EXA registration is across the country. It's not specific to one province, but here they have their own registrations per province. So if you would move to another province for whatever reason, and you want to keep and practice and be a professionally registered engineer in that province, you would have to go through whatever process that province has for engineers coming from different parts of Canada and the rest of the world. And number six is the fact that different provinces here can have different public holidays. Now there's public holidays that are similar. Across the world, I think Christmas is one of those where on the 25th of December, it's a public holiday in a lot of places. Canada is similar, but Canada does have public holidays that apply in certain provinces and not in other provinces. So you'll find sometimes that you have colleagues, you're all in Canada, but you're working in different parts of Canada. And some people may have a public holiday or you may have a public holiday and your colleagues don't. It just depends on the province that you're in. So that might be something that you could look into because I personally have never 
done that and I'm only thinking of it right now, honestly. How many public holidays do the different provinces get? And then I don't know if that's something that you would use as something that makes you move to a particular province, if there is one that has more public holidays for some reason. It would be weird if that was the case. But yeah, different provinces can have different public holidays in Canada and that is normal. I would love to hear what the most surprising, interesting or unexpected thing was for you that I mentioned today. So let me know in the comment section and if you are watching this video and you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love to invite you to hit that red subscribe button and become a part of the Lucy G family. My name is Lucy and I will see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.